Yo, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Jay here, and I'm back with another video. That is right, another video today. On today's episode, we are talking about Darksiders 3. Um, I personally have bought the Definitive Edition for the PlayStation 4, um, and I already had all the DLC for the, the PS3 and the PC, so I didn't need to really buy the game for a third time, but I felt the need to only because Darksiders 2 is such a great game. Like, like I really wish they would have uh, actually made a Darksiders 1 uh, remaster that came with the Death Definitive Edition because I had all of the, I probably said this in like three or four or five other videos that I had all the DLC for this game. Uh, even all the promotional stuff where it's like, oh, go online and fill out this survey and you'll get like Agul's Tomb or some shit. But, Anyway, the kind of focus of today's uh, video is that Darksiders 3 has now pretty much been confirmed. Um, I was reading an article on, I believe it was IGN or GameSpot or Kotaku, one of, one of those sites, right? And on, on the site, basically, um, since Vigil Games and THQ are no longer in business, um, who, who the fuck is it that does it now? Um, blah, 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 blah. What the hell is it? Oh, um, Nordic Games. That's who it does it. Nordic Games was basically putting out the uh, remaster to see, to kind of gauge what the audience was like for the game and see if people would want, you know, another edition of it. I guess it sold enough uh, copies or, you know, got enough hype behind it to where to warrant a Darksiders 3. Now, uh, they haven't started production or anything, um, according to this article I found that was directly linked to the Steam page. Um, and it was uh, that Darksiders 3 is still being planned. Um, basically, it's, it's a great hack and slash game. And they, they use this as bait, essentially. And they're just like, oh, if people like it, we'll throw something else out there. I'm very interested to see uh, where the universe goes um, after this game. Because if, anybody, if any of you guys have played the first Darksiders compared to the second, it's like a night and day difference. It's, it's like, whoa, like... You almost can't even tell they're part of the same series, so I would love to see what Darksiders 3 brings to the table. Personally, Death is my favorite of the four horsemen. I'm very interested to see what some of the other horsemen are and like other playable characters, but here, here's the thing that I kind of have to elaborate on. I don't want to see like a multiplayer. I, I don't want to see like... Uh, extreme DLC because y this game was like ridden with DLC but the fact that I bought it all was because the game was so good like it, it took me forever to finish the game because I was playing it on apocalyptic at first and I didn't really see a need to play on anything else because I had played the first Darksiders and I was like I think I got the combat down so uh, of course when I played on PC I was like I'm gonna play on normal because I just want to get through the game the first time and then the second time I'll go through apocalyptic um, but the game has so much shit in it. Like, there's so many items that you can just pick up and customize death with. It's ridiculous in how many powers you can unlock. And the world is just so huge. So I, I definitely want to see Darksiders 3 take that kind of same approach with a huge world. And every time you pick up an item, I literally want it to be Darksiders 2. Just bigger, um, a new playable character. Well, I would like to play as I would like to play as War again. War was pretty cool, but compared to Death, like nobody, nobody's better than Death. Death is fucking awesome. So I would love to play as him again. The way the characters interacted with each other, and like just the way some of the characters looked, like their 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 actual design was just fucking amazing. Like there was this guy early on in in Darksiders Two who was like he looked like a fucking crow essentially, and he was like covered in feathers and all this other shit. Then there was this nigga made of trees and I thought that was really fucking cool so there's a lot of there oh, I, I feel like they just literally take a bunch of random shit it, it's like when um Gearbox creates Borderlands they just take the concept of one thing and they're just like okay let's flip it over three or four times and then see what we come up with like Krieg the Psycho was always one of my favorite he was my favorite character I'm, I'm gonna be like straight up like he was my favorite character in the Borderlands series only because of the level of like intense shit he would say he's just like I i'll dissect your corpse and make you turn you into a meat bicycle or some shit and i'm like whoa like this is my d oh my god that was my dude so um i i had a whole lot of fun playing those games and, and darksiders really is a universe where so many things could exist and so many things could happen and there's all of these uh pre-established characters that you never get to meet and i'm like Man, this would be so fucking cool to see what some of these characters are like. Between, actually, you know what? The one character I did always wanted to play as was Strife. Because he was like, it, well, basically, like, think death, 
from uh, Darksiders 2, but put him like give him a metal helmet that goes over his head, like give him that kind of Arkham Knight look, and then have him just be. Oh man, it's really hard. I'll, like I'll I'll show you guys a picture uh, on screen now, but like this guy just looks so fucking dope, and I kept hearing about him in the game. And the other the other Horseman is Fury, and she was. Oh man, I, I keep thinking she's like a Medusa and uh, like uh, kind of like Medusa from Smite. I, I would have liked to see you know one of these uh, characters be playable, and then of course you know if they bring in Lilith, who's like the mother the mother of all four of the Horsemen or whatever. I, I don't remember that was in Darksiders one, so I can't I can't really I don't remember because it was just so long ago. But I, there's just so much shit you could add to this game, so I'm really looking forward to it. And what this also reminds me of is the situation with Jack and Daxter. Um, Jack and Daxter, I felt like could have had a fourth game, but I don't feel Naughty Dog is in the correct place. Well, not in the correct place, but I don't think, I think Naughty Dog coming up with a Jack and Daxter, like, four game, it would be more difficult to write the story and the script and, like, add new characters and stuff like that because the universe is the way that it is. Like, it, it, basically, uh, I, I remember I saw an interview, uh, after The Last of Us had come out and it was about Jack and Daxter or something. And they were like, oh yeah, we would have loved to make a Jack 4 game. The only problem was every time we wrote a story, it seemed like it didn't fit. And like, fan, like it wouldn't go with the fans. Like the fans would just notice like this is completely made up. Um, which is why I fucks with Naughty Dog so heavy because those guys, those guys literally like they'll put quality over anything else. And they'll basically, if it doesn't fit, they won't do it. And uh, I would lo I would have loved to see a Jack 4. Um, but I think what some of the prerequisites were early on was that um, Jack 4 was an idea. So they were like, okay, well, um, there's this game PlayStation Heroes coming out with Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, and let's let's see what happens. So that game sold moderately well. Like I bought a, I bought a copy for it and came with a free copy for the Vita. Then PlayStation All Stars came out, and it was like, well, we're gonna put Jack and Daxter in this one and see how they do and and see what, where it goes from there. Game sold great. Unfortunately, like you know, the community died or whatever. Um, but and I was a huge like part of that community. Oh my god, it was just so much fun. Uh, and then a remaster came out. The remaster came out for the Vita, which w did not, it was not optimized very well at all. And, and on the consoles, the consoles, it did really well. Like I, I bought it and I was just like, ama I, it brought back so much nostalgia. So I would have loved to see a Jack and Daxter four come out. Um, and hopefully it does. Like, I feel like, you know, the remaster did well enough that it has warranted that people do want a Jack and Daxter game. Cause I play, I think the last one I played was like Lost Frontier and Jack X. Jack X, oh, I had so much fun with. They need to make a remaster of that. That needs to be on a fucking, that needs to be in the PlayStation store for PS4. Cause I'm tired of per turning my PlayStation 3 on. Um, <laughs> uh, so th I, I feel like those games that have received remasters and stuff like that, they need, uh, sequels much like gravity rush and how gravity rush i think is the best game on vita like hands down it is the best game on the vita and now that the vita no longer has first party support uh there's a gravity rush remaster coming to the playstation 4 and as well as it's as well as its sequel i think it's called gravity crush or, or something like that and it's coming to the playstation 4 only which means it's not th that means they just completely up and drop the vita which is like are, are you fucking kidding me? But then again, they didn't put up a... Sony didn't really put up a good fight for the Vita anyway. It seemed like their marketing was not there. Their game development was not there. Everything was all third party anyway. Um, and the only games I really played on my Vita were uh, PSP titles like Dissidia and like all... That's a that's another thing that needs a, you know, quick update. And we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, I used to play, D you know, Dissidia. Um, what else is on my Vita? Uh, Dragon's Crown, pretty much any cross-buy game. I beat the Sly Cooper 5 uh, on PS3 and on Vita, but I had more fun playing on the Vita because I could take it with me. I feel like a lot of these games do... Um, there are some games that do need a remaster and things like that, like Dissidia uh, Final Fantasy. If any of you guys have ever played Dissidia Final Fantasy, you know that it's such a good game. Like, it's so... The depth of that game is is just amazing and then uh duodecim just added on top of that and then they were like oh one dollar dlc here and there for extra costumes and stages and like all this other stuff and i was like man this is this is fucking cool um and now there's a ps4 version coming to japan when hopefully that gets localized and comes to america but we'll see only time can tell let me know what you guys think in the comment section below this has been jay and i will catch you guys next time